So we just finished the review of authorization objects, and I want to use an analogy to explain the concept in case you still have questions. I want you to think of the authorization object as a house that can have up to 10 areas or rooms, okay? Each area or room is the authorization field, and what you can do in each area or room is the field value. So if you want to do anything in the house, you must first have the associated authorization field and value assigned to your role. Let's go through an example. So for example, at the most basic level, your role must first have the authorization field that grants access to the entrance of the house. This means that you must first be given access to the key to open the door before you can enter the house, right? In SAP, this is the T code that must be included in your authorization object. So in the analogy, you first have to have access to get into the house before you can even do anything in the house. From SAP's perspective, the T code is necessary for you to even have access to the program before you are allowed to perform any activity in that program, okay? Then, after you enter the house, you really can't do anything unless it is specifically part of the access that you are granted via the authorization object in the role. So, in order for you to do anything in the kitchen, for example, using our house analogy, the kitchen field must be included in the authorization object. Then the field value for kitchen will state whether you can cook, clean, or wash dishes in the kitchen. The activity that you can perform, which is either clean, cook, or wash dishes, is based on the field value that's granted in the authorization object. So if only cook is listed in the value, then that's all you can do. And then let's say you want to actually go to the dining room. That area also has to be listed in the authorization object as a field. And then the value for that field will determine whether you can eat at the dining table or if you can only sit at the dining table. As a reminder, all 10 rooms or areas do not need to be used, only the ones that are necessary for the action that the user is trying to perform. So let me put this all together with an example. So for our example, if the goal of the role that we want to assign to the user is to allow that user to cook food in the kitchen and then eat at the dining table, then the authorization object will look something like what I have on the screen here. First, the T code to enter the house has to be listed in the field. And then the kitchen field has to be listed with at least the cook value so that that user can actually cook in the kitchen, okay? The dining room field also has to be listed with the eat at the table value. Other values can be added to kitchen and dining room, but these two are the required minimum for that user to be able to cook in the kitchen and then eat at the table. All of this must pass the authorization check before the user is actually granted access to perform the activity. If any of this fails, then the user is not granted access. So for example, if the dining room field that has the value eat at the table is not present, then the user is not granted access to do any of these activities, okay? So let's now translate this back to the SAP authorization object. Each authorization object can list up to 10 fields and values that determine what activities the user can perform. So I hope this analogy helps to explain the authorization object if you still had questions.